we are going to talk about um, learning today, which is why we're all here, right? Um, so long ago, well, actually not that long ago, it was a few months ago, I was writing a massive open online course, a MOOC, um, for the edX platform, which is kind of like Coursera, all those different open online courses. And we were writing a course called the Neuroscience of Learning. And so we were going through all the different pieces, writing scripts for videos and texts for people to read. And I thought, I would love a really just great succinct definition of what learning is. So I went to all my UDL resources because it's universal design for learning. There's gotta be a great definition in one of these things. And what I found was that we defined expert learning over and over again and did a great job of it. I feel like we can mostly recite that an expert learner is purposeful and motivated, resourceful and knowledgeable and strategic and goal directed and that we're very, very familiar with that. But what I couldn't find was what is learning? We forgot to define the learning part. So we've talked about what universal is, that it's not just one thing, that it's offering choices and flexibility. And we talked about design, which is intentionally creating learning environments and tools and resources. Um, but we forgot to define what learning is, and this is not unique to us. I then went to all the other education literature, and we keep saying how to make learning better, and we never stop to ask, but what is it? So, I want us to think about that today. So why should we stop and do this? Yesterday I was talking to George Van Horn, who's conveniently not here so I can talk about him. And he, I said, you're gonna miss my talk about what is learning. And he's like, Lisa, we've gotten this far without having to define it, I think we're good. Um, <laughs> so why should we define it? We need to define it so that we can support intentionality with our UDL practice. Um, if we, part of being a UDL practitioner is identifying barriers to learning, then we need to know what learning is so we can better identify those barriers. For the researchers among us, it helps us if we operationalize learning in a way that we all agree upon. And that can help us guide research question formation and also do some of the work that the group that was just up here was talking about, which is creating um, a way for the whole field to talk with similar terminology and through a similar lens. So before I give you my idea of how we should define this, I want you guys to stop and think and generate your own definitions. So you could write or sketch or tweet. I made a hashtag for hashtag learning is. Um, you can type it up or you could even do an interpretive dance because this is UDL and you can have at it. Um, but I want us to pause. You can talk to the people around the room with you. What is learning? If someone stopped you on the street right now, or you were at Disney or Universal and someone stopped you because they saw your UDL swag and they were like, but what is learning? How would you describe it? Okay, so when I told you guys to come up with a definition of learning, I saw a whole bunch of collective faces kind of scrunch to the side with the thinking head turn. Um, so we're going to come back to your conversations because I want those to continue, but I'm going to give you a definition that I'm proposing. I'm not telling you that this is the definition. I'm just saying that this is a proposal for a direction we can go in. And so I'm thinking that since UDL is written in part from neuroscience, which very specifically is mostly neuropsychological research, that we go and ask our neuroscience friends, how they define learning. And that maybe that's a good direction for us to go in because it's going to encompass the cognitive aspects, but also the neurobiological and developmental aspects. So I went to some different neuropsych texts and found this definition. Learning is a process. So it's not one singular thing. So if any of us were trying to say like, this is what learning is, and you didn't think in terms of a process, it might have been a barrier to coming up with a good definition. And we can think of it as a four step chain. So the first step is that you have to pay attention to something. It doesn't get into the brain meets without you paying attention to it first. 
And the next piece is encoding, or called processing, and that's where your brain takes in the information, makes sense of it, and in part makes sense of it by connecting it to your prior experiences and knowledge. Then your brain has to store that information, so it has to move it into your memory systems, the long-term memory, and then we don't know if learning occurred unless you retrieve it. So you have to retrieve it purposefully, and you have to do something with it. And this is our four-step chain. So what does this definition offer us as UDL practitioners? Well, first, it fits really nicely with the whole brain-based component of the framework. And then it helps us to better think about the aspects of the framework because it actually connects really nicely. And I'm assuming very purposefully um, because the people at CAST, I think, knew what they were doing. Right, so how does it match up? Well, to be, to start off this piece with attention, in order to pay attention, you actually have to emotionally engage with stuff. Um, so as the director of the neuropsychology department at Kennedy Krieger likes to say, uh, emotion is the gatekeeper to attention. We attend when we care. So connecting that engagement piece triggers the first step of our chain. The next piece with encoding, we know that you have to connect things to other things you know, that our brains like to just kind of create these little links in a chain. And that sounds a lot like something like, you might know this phrase, um, to supply background knowledge, you know, like the background knowledge piece, right? Um, and the next thing is that we have to store it. And our capacities to store information is actually very variable. Um, some people have more limited capacities than others. Some people need to hear things or experience things multiple times before it gets in. Other people can remember it right away. Um, and so that's a piece of variability that when we're talking about learner variability, we need to consider. And that last piece, retrieval, how we retrieve it, how we set up an accessible, meaningful way for people to retrieve the information is part of what we do. We say that we're going to give learners an option to show what they know in the way that fits them best. And this helps us to know who is actually engaging in the learning process rather than presenting barriers to us figuring this out. So my definition, the definition, and it's not really mine because I got it from that book that I showed you guys, um, but the definition I'm proposing is only one definition of learning. There are other definitions. If you ask a behaviorist what learning is, they'll say that there was a stimulus, the stimulus caused you to change your behavior, that got reinforced, and then you kept doing it. And that actually still fits in what I just said. You could link all of those pieces together. And I don't feel that that definition is untrue. I just don't think it's as helpful as this definition. And so, we can actually come together with all the different definitions of learning and as a group decide which one fits what we're trying to do and the way we're thinking about learning best. But we need to do it collectively and as a group so that we're all talking about the same thing. Because if we're not all talking about the same thing, then we can't really move people to the expert level. That would me, be me like saying, we're gonna do pro cycling, I'm gonna describe the attributes of a pro cyclist, which is they have tenacity, they're not afraid to fall down, they take sharp turns, they look great in spandex, right? These are all the things that a pro cyclist does, but I didn't describe to you how to ride a bike. And so I can't get you to pro cyclist status because I didn't explain that first piece. And so as a community, we need to think about learning first in order to move people toward expert learning. So I want us to continue that conversation and thank you very much for participating this morning.